It attacks the vitality, options, and mobility of the individuals of a society by knowing, understanding, manipulating, and attacking their sources of natural and social energy, and their physical, mental, and emotional strengths and weaknesses. Meyer M. Schoolroth's Child, 1743 to 1812, Give me control over nation's currency, and I care not who makes its laws. Today's silent weapons technology is an outgrowth of a simple idea discovered, succinctly expressed, and effectively applied by the quoted Mr. Meyer M. Schoolroth's Child. He discovered the missing passive component of economic theory known as economic inductance. He, of course, did not think of his discovery in these 20th century terms, and, to be sure, mathematical analysis had to wait for the second industrial revolution, the rise of the theory of mechanics and electronics, and finally, the invention of the electronic computer before it could be effectively applied in the control of the world economy. Dot, in economics three concepts are associated with, 1, economic capacitance, capital, money, stock, inventory, investments in buildings and durables, etc. 2. Economic conductance, goods, production flow coefficients, 3. Economic inductance, services, the influence of the population of industry on output. All of the mathematical theory developed in the study of the one energy system, for example, mechanics, electronics, etc., can be immediately applied in the study of any other energy system, for example, economics. What Mr. Rothschild had discovered was the basic principle of power, influence, and control over the people as applied to economics. That principle is when you assume the appearance of power, people soon give it to you. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency or deposit loan accounts had the required appearance of power that could be used to induce people into surrendering their real wealth in exchange for a promise of greater wealth. They put up real collateral in exchange for a loan of promissory notes. Mr. Rothschild found that he could issue more notes than he had backing for, so long as he had someone's stock of gold as persuader to show to his customers. Mr. Rothschild loaned his promissory note to individuals and to governments. These would create overconfidence. Then he would make money scare, tighten control of the system, and collect the collateral through the obligation of contractors. The cycle was then repeated. These pressures could be used to initiate a war. Then he would control the availability of currency to determine who would win the war. That government which agreed to give him control of its economic system got his support. Collection of debts was guaranteed by economic aid to the enemy of the debtor. The profit derived from this economic methodology made Mr. Rothschild all the more able to extend his wealth. He found that the public greed would allow currency to be printed by government order beyond the limits, inflation, of backing in previous metal or the production of goods and services, GMP. In this structure, credit, presented as a pure element called currency, has the appearance of capital, but is, in fact, indebtedness of debt. It is therefore an economic inductance instead of an economic capacitance and if balanced in no other way will be balanced by the negation of population, war, genocide. The total goods and services represent real capital called the gross national product, and currency may be printed up to this level and still represent economic capacitance, but currency printed beyond this level is subtractive, represents the induction of economic inductance, and constitutes notes of indebtedness. War is therefore the balancing of the system by killing the true creditors, the public which we have taught to exchange true value for inflated currency, and falling back on whatever is left of the resources of nature and regeneration of those resources. Mr. Rothschild had discovered that currency gave him the power to rearrange the economic structure to his own advantage to shift economic inductance to those economic positions which would encourage the greatest economic instability and oscillation. The final key to economic control had to wait until there was sufficient data and high-speed computer equipment to keep close watch on the economic oscillations created by price shocking and excess paper energy credits, paper inductance, inflation.
The aviation field provided the greatest evolution in economic engineering by way of the mathematical theory of shock testing. In this process, a project ELIS fired an airframe on the ground and the impulse of the recoil is monitored by vibration transducers connected to the airframe and wired to chart recorders. By studying the echoes or reflections of the recoil T-pulse in the airframe, it is possible to discover critical vibrations in the structure of the airframe which either vibrations of the engine or aeolian vibrations of the wings, or a combination of the two, might reinforce resulting in a resonant self-destruction of the airframe in flight as an aircraft. From the standpoint of engineering, this means that the strength and weakness of the structure of the airframe in terms of vibrational energy can be discovered and manipulated. To use this method of airframe shock testing in economic engineering, the prices of commodities are shocked, and the public consumer reaction is monitored. The resulting echoes of the economic shock are interpreted theoretically by computers and the psychoeconomic structure of the economy is thus discovered. It is by this process that partial differential and difference matrices are discovered that define the family household and make possible its evaluation as an economic industry, dissipative consumer structure. Then the response of the household to future shocks can be predicted and manipulated, and society becomes a well-regulated animal with its reins under the control of a sophisticated computer-regulated social energy bookkeeping system. Eventually every individual element of the structure comes under computer control through a knowledge of personal preferences, such knowledge guaranteed by Computer Association of Consumer Preferences, Universal Product Code, UPC, Zebra Stripe Pricing Codes on Packages, with identified consumers, identified via association with the use of a credit card. The Harvard Economic Research Project, 1948 was an extension of World War II operations research. Its purpose was to discover the science of controlling an economy, at first the American economy, and then the world economy. It was felt that with sufficient mathematical foundation and data, it would be nearly as easy to predict and control the trend of an economy as to predict and control the trajectory of a projectile. Dot, the immediate aim of the Harvard was to discover the economic structure what forces change that structure, how the behavior of the structure can be predicted, and how it can be manipulated. What was needed was a well-organized knowledge of the mathematical structures and interrelationships of investment, production, distribution, and consumption. Dot. It was discovered that an economy obeyed the same laws as electricity and that all of the mathematical theory and practical and computer know-how developed for the electronic field could be directly applied in the study of economics. This discovery was not openly declared, and its more subtle implications were and kept a closely guarded secret, for example that in an economic model, human life is measured in dollars and that the electric spark generated when opening a switch connected to an active inductor is mathematically analogous to the initiation of a war. The greatest hurdle which theoretical economists faced was the accurate description of the household as an industry. This is a challenge because consumer purchases are a matter of choice which in turn is influenced by income, price, and other economic factors. This hurdle was cleared in an indirect and statistically approximate way by an application of shock testing to determine the current characteristics, called current technical coefficients, or household industry. Quote, Diversion, the primary strategy. Experience has proven that the simplest method of securing a silent weapon and gaining control of the public is to keep the public undisciplined and ignorant of basic systems principles on the one hand while keeping them confused disorganized and distracted with matters of no real importance on the other hand that describes the mainstream media look how they talk to the presidential candidates talking to them about bullshit things that mean nothing anything that is of substance that can actually put people to the uh, to the direction of these evildoers, these Luciferian scum who have controlled us and continue to control us 
us giving them willful consent. It's, it's outrageous. And what's even more outrageous is that they write in this document that they believe us to be dumb sheep, stupid cattle, that like animals who have no intellect, those who do not use their intellect, intellect are no better than cattle who have no intellect and are therefore stakes on the table by choice and consent. This is who we're dealing with because they are the illumined ones. They are the all-knowing, all-seeing ones. So you have to understand where they're coming from. This is achieved, back to the text, this is achieved by disengaging their minds, sabotaging their mental activities, providing a low-quality program of education in mathematics, logic, systems design, and economics, and discouraging technical creativity, engaging their emotions, increasing their self-indulgence and their indulgence in emotional and physical activities by unrelenting emotional affrontations and attacks, mental and emotional rape, by ways of constant barrage of sex, violence, and wars in the media, especially in the TV and newspapers, giving them what they desire in excess, junk food for thought, and depriving them of what they really need, rewriting history and law, and subjecting the public to the deviant creation, thus being able to shift their thinking from personal needs to highly fabricated outside priorities. These pre preclude their interest in and discovery of the silent weapons of social automation technology. The general rule is that there is profit in confusion. The more confusion, the more profit. Therefore, the best approach to create problems and then offer solutions, which is what they do. Hegelian dialectic. The best approach is to create problems and offer the solutions. Diversion summary. Media. Keep the adult public attention diverted away from the real social issues and captivated by matters of no real importance. Schools. Keep the young people ignorant of real mathematics, real economics, real law, and real history. Entertainment. Keep the public entertained below a sixth grade level. Listen to that. Work. Keep the public busy, busy, busy with no time to think. Back on the farm with the other animals. Consent. The primary victory. A silent weapon system operates upon data from a docile public by legal but not always lawful force. Much information is made available to silent weapon systems programmers through the Internal Revenue Service. This information consists of enforced delivery of well-organized data contained in federal and state tax forms, collected, assembled, and submitted by slave labor provided by taxpayers and employers. Furthermore, the number of such forms submitted to the IRS is a useful indicator of public consent, an important factor in strategic decision making. Other data sources given in the short list of inputs. Co consent coefficients, numerological feedback indicating victory status, psychological basis. When the government is able to collect tax and seize private property without just compensation, it is an indication that the public is ripe for surrender and is consenting to enslavement and legal encroachment, a good and easily quantified indicator of harvest time, listen to this, harvest time, is the number of public citizens who pay income tax despite an obvious lack of reciprocal or honest service from the government. So that's just a little piece of the, piece of the pie here from these elitists. But who are they? They go back, way back. Um, as Aldous Huxley was saying, the elite who have always been in control and presumably always will. Isn't that what he said? So, secret societies and the new world order. There is a power so organized, so subtle, so complete, so pervasive that they better not speak above their breath when they speak in condemnation of it. President Woodrow Wilson said that. He knew about them. He wrote about them in the New Freedom. He was duped by his buddy, his alter ego, House, into selling the American people down the river by creating the Federal Reserve Crime Syndicate. 